I don't know. Like uh, Fa Father Marcus is not joining us, Hanan? I am not sure. I sent him the link, but I'm not sure. Oh, we can wait a little uh, Can you give us idea, Lisa, about yourself before yeah, starting? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. So I am a, a convert to Orthodox Christianity. I came to the Orthodox Church when I was in my mid-20s. Um, and ever since I've been um, involved in the church in one way or another. So I... Because I have a voice, I was thrown into the leadership role at the choir at our church. Um, so I've been doing that for the last almost 20 years. I do also dabble in um, helping with the Pan Orthodox Choir. That happens once a year as well. I have three children. Uh, my oldest son is in grade seven this year. He just turned 12. I have a and two two daughters one is nearly 10 and the other is is six so i um i keep busy i also i'm for my profession we my husband and i own uh, a local manufacturing company here in town uh, so after many years of being a stay-at-home mom and just focusing on my little ones i've i've now jumped into a full-time role as an office manager so i'm wearing a lot of hats this year <laughs> we're also as we get this school ready to go we've decided to homeschool our children for this year as well so um i'm learning lots about um all sorts of facets about what it means to educate our children thankfully i'm doing that alongside my sister who is a certified teacher so she um keeps me on track uh she's going to be one of the teachers that's involved in this school Yeah, I think that's that's me in a nutshell. But if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer Hi. them. Okay. <laughs> Pleasure. Salam alaikum. Uh, hi, Alice. How are you? Mm. I'm well. Thank you, Father. How are you? Thanks. I'm good. Thanks, God. Mm. Okay. Did you start or not yet? No, I was just sharing a little bit about myself while we wait potentially for mm -hmm. more to join. Mm. Stop the streaming. Did you say? Yeah, we started the streaming. You can go ahead. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so I am not sure how much has already been shared with this group about what the school is. So I'm going to start with the basics. Um, as we're going through, if anyone wants to jump in with questions, this is the first time I've done this presentation online. Used, I'm used to being able to read the crowd and see the questions in people's eyes as I'm going through. So I don't have that advantage this time around. So please speak up. Um, I can't say that I'll be uh, good enough to read the chat. So if any questions end up in the chat, if one of the other people could please just let me know and I will answer as we go along. But with no further ado, um, welcome to Heavenly King Orthodox Academy. So to start with, I'd like to share a little bit about why we call ourselves Heavenly King, uh, how we came to that, how we came to that name. So right from the get go, you'll see this thread throughout the presentation. But it was very, very important to us that we be a pan-Orthodox organization, that we include all of the Orthodox communities in Winnipeg in the establishment of the school. Um, so we wanted to choose a name that meant something uh, to all of the Orthodox traditions. And from what I understand in, this is one of the prayers in the Coptic Orthodox tradition as well in the, the prayer of the third hour. Uh, this is also a prayer that we, in my tradition, we start almost every one of our services with, and it's the prayer to the Holy Spirit, which goes, O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls. Also a good one. I think the wording might be a bit different across the traditions, but the essence is the same, um, that we are asking the Holy Spirit to 
inside us to dwell in us and not only in us but in our children and in our school and to really um, illumine all of us through this really important work that we're doing. Um, to that end, to the, for us wanting to be pan-Orthodox, yes, absolutely, the school is going to be pan-Orthodox and welcoming families from all over. But you'll see that also in our team as well. Our team is from all uh, over Winnipeg, from all sorts of different parishes and cultural backgrounds. Um, our spiritual director, Father Sinisha, is from the Serbian church. Uh, we have people from the Ukrainian, the Russian, the Greek, uh, the Romanian. Uh, I myself am from the Orthodox Church of America. And of course, we have a couple of familiar names for you. We have uh, Marion and George as well, who come from St. Mark. And all of these people, yes, we are we come from all sorts of different cultural backgrounds and traditions, but the essence of what we believe is the same. Uh, the root of our orthodoxy, the, the mindset that we share is one and the same. And it's been such an encouragement to me to see that at our meetings and in our conversations, um, that this will be a beautiful thing for our children to come together um, and understand that their orthodoxy is shared by more than potentially they, they first think. So my, my own children, to share a little bit more, my, my church is quite small. So I'm part of the English language community at a Russian church on Manitoba Avenue. So my three children are some of the only children that attend the services regularly. So what a gift to give our children uh, to show them that, that they're not alone. So our vision then is to create a joyful learning environment rooted in Orthodox values that engages the mind and illuminates the heart. And I think that, that snippet there, that joyful learning environment, I think a lot of schools um, talk about that right now, how they want to create a joyful learning environment for their children. And I, I think what they're actually talking about is happiness. They want to keep their kids happy. And as Orthodox, happiness is something that's external, right? So you create something that happens outside of your own dimension to reduce distraction or reduce anxiety, right? But in, in the Orthodox, understanding what joy truly is this is something that comes from within this is the holy spirit again the holy the heavenly king the comforter dwelling within us and emanating out so so it's not necessarily about although we will create an environment right externally that is helpful for our children it's more about creating the the environment for their spiritual growth that's what this school is about there that's where that rooted orthodox values comes in mind um that engages the mind and illuminates the heart. So of course, we want a solid academic foundation for our children as well. We understand that they need to be um, in this world, even though um, we're not of this world, we still are called to participate in it. Uh, so the goal then is to give them the tools that they need uh, to support them in their learning and have, a, yes, a, a, I won't say strict necessarily, but a certainly um, high expectations for our children and for their academic learning, but always bring it back to the true focus, right? Which is for all of us, theosis, right? That is our, that is our true goal. So here is our mission. So before I, I read the mission to you, I'm going to explain what those three um, circles are here. So our understanding of Orthodox education is that there are three pillars of Orthodox education. There's the church, there's home, and there's the school. And we need all three of those to be in alignment in order for our education to have a firm foundation, to have a firm base. And in my own experience for my own children, sending them to public school, I would say that 
Um, those three things were not in alignment. <laughs> uh, what they were learning at the school and the, uh, the atmosphere, the environment, the conversations that were happening in the school were at odds with what was happening in the home and the church. As much as I tried to al align our home life to what the church was calling it to be, um, the school fell short. Uh, so our goal then is to work, as, as our mission statement says, to work alongside the family and the church, educating the whole child within a Christ-centered environment, serving the community of Winnipeg and its surrounding areas. And to fulfill that mission, our goals then are to, as I said, offer a strong, well-rounded academic program. One of the uh, criticisms that I first faced when we started talking about this school was that the uh, parochial schools this person had been uh, exposed to in the past didn't properly prepare their children for, for life in the world. So obviously that is something that we are, um, that we feel quite strongly about, that we want to offer that to our children. <laughs> I could share another story about what's happening in the, in the public schools, how my, uh, let's just put it kindly, that the math program that they were uh, expecting my grade six son to uh, participate in was far below his level. Um, so I believe strongly as a parent that that is not something I want for my kids and I want him to, to uh, achieve his full potential. So that is something that we absolutely have as one of our goals and our mission. Um, the next line says to foster the intellectual, physical and spiritual well-being of our students and staff. Again, looking at this from a holistic point of view, this is not just about letters and numbers. It is also about their spiritual formation. We want to serve Orthodox families from all cultures, all backgrounds, and all jurisdictions again. Pardon me? Oh, I thought I heard someone chiming in there. So again, you're going to see that thread again and again through this presentation is that our goal is to be pan-Orthodox. Uh, to teach in our common English language. So obviously that is our common thread. That's, this is where we can all meet together while celebrating our cultural diversity, especially by encouraging students and staff to share through liturgical music and iconography. Our traditions are so beautiful <laughs> and we do not want to push that aside um, and pretend that, that, um, that it's homogenous because that's not orthodoxy, right? So we, we want to encourage that celebration of cultural diversity um, but again, teaching in our common English language, you will see later on, we will have a basic French program, but that is outside of this, uh, this mission and goals. And then lastly, and most importantly, I would say to nurture an Orthodox mindset and outlook through prayer, scripture, tradition, and practicing the virtues. This is something obviously that is missing in a lot of our kids' schools. And I think it is such an important element uh, we can't, we can't ignore that. So getting into a little bit more of the nuts and the bolts, Heavenly King Orthodox Academy this year, our goal is to open up three classrooms. Um, depending on the student enrollment and the location that is secured, those classrooms would be a grade one, two, a grade three, four, and a grade five, six. What's not listed here, but I think it's important to note is that we will always aim for small class sizes. Um, given the nature of the pandemic, of course, that restricts us quite a bit as well. Probably these classes are going to be maxed at 15 students per child for this year. Although even uh, post COVID, we have talked about this and I believe our cap is going to be 20 per class. Again, that's something that we feel has gone off in the public and as well as private schools. They're just trying to, um, take on too many students and they can't properly attend to the students that are in our class. I'm, and this is nothing against the teachers that are in those systems. I think they have everyone's best interests at heart. Um, but given the nature of having 30 plus sometimes kids in your classroom, it's just too hard to navigate. So that is our goal to keep a small class size. 
and we will, we do intend to grow God willing. We intend to grow every year. So our hope for the following year then would be to offer a kindergarten through to grade seven. The reason why we're not offering kindergarten for this year is because we have to apply for the first year as a non-funded independent school. At least it's looking very likely that that's the case. And a non-funded independent school is not allowed to offer kindergarten. Uh, they're also not allowed to offer before and after programs. Um, but we hope to get all of our ducks in a row so that in our second year of operation, we can apply as a funded school. We have to meet all of those requirements for two years. Sorry, I think someone's got their uh, audio on. I'm not sure who it is. I got a question from Alisa. Yes, Alisa. go ahead. I think we've got an, an question pad about uh, are you planning to do uh, above grade seven in the future till grade 12? Or? I would love that. So our, our limitations, again, we're going to try, it's easy to think really big and try too much too quickly. And I think that could be, that could be a danger. So we are starting more humbly, but yes, uh, we would like to be able to add a, a grade every year um, so that we can follow our kids and make sure that they're being accommodated every year. Um, that sorry, will depend I on, a sorry. Yes. I'm just learning. So your classes, it seems like it's grades one and two, three, four, five, and six. So is that like shared classes between the grades? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a mixed class. So we, our intention again is once we have a big enough facility and enough teachers to start doing single age grades, but the reality of a startup school is that we're going to have to start with a mix um, so yeah, you'll have both of those grades in the same classroom. The teacher can then break them into groups to have the age appropriate, grade appropriate material uh, for each of those, uh, the split classroom. Um, and again, just to your, your question there, YT is to, if we have a big enough facility, uh, we would love to go up to grade 12. But right now uh, that would be to, too much to stretch for. We have another question, if you don't mind. Thank you for answering our questions. Yes. Uh, we got in the chat, uh, Pad, um, uh, a register of fee for each child. I think you put it in the in the schedule before. I, I think two, yeah. three thousand for first child. I think tuition fees. Um, uh, another question, where is the location of the school? So that you'll see again a little bit later on, we are still trying to solidify our location. We do have a very good option right now uh, that looks quite positive. Although we've had really good options before that have fallen through. So I'm hesitant to, to, to uh, count my, how do, you, how do you say, count my chickens before they're hatched? <laughs> So we're still putting out feelers for locations. Um, we should know by the end of January. So that's not very long, a couple of weeks now. Our goal is to have it secured before we begin accepting applications in February. Um, we would like to keep it central. So that's something um, for your community to keep in mind. Uh, we, the, the location right now is um, actually just off of Main Street in central Winnipeg. So it's it should be accessible from all areas of the city quite easily. Uh, again, you won't, in a, in a future slide, you'll see this, but we won't have a bus system, but we will try to accommodate uh, ride shares. So if anyone is from similar parts of the city, we will try to coordinate people so that we can get carpools together. Thank you, Lisa. We have another question. Yes. About it will be in English all the study or uh, or any other languages like Russian or any. No. Yeah. So we we will be in English school, uh, in English school because um, Canada is bilingual with the French and English. We do want to offer a basic French program. Um, 
and our, our teachers are um, qualified for that. Absolutely. So we would like to do that. Uh, but I, for the, the different cultural languages, so Ukrainian, Russian, um, Romanian, all of the Serbian, <laughs> all of those churches tend to have language classes already for their own children. I don't think that's something that we'll need to offer. Oh, no, and perhaps nor should we, as a pan-Orthodox school, we'd like to keep this um, so that everyone is united, right? Thank you so much. And uh, we have another question about, do you have religious courses? It will be yes. religious courses. That's right. There will be spiritual instruction. So, and that is something that we're still trying to navigate what exactly that looks like. But of course, as Orthodox, everything is infused with that thread of Orthodoxy, right? We're always going to have prayer. Everything that we come across is always going to be um, realigned to what we should really be focusing on, right? So that is going to thread through every subject all the time, every day. <laughs> now, the actual uh, religious instruction, though, um, we've talked about potentially bringing in uh, priests from the different traditions so that, because there are differences in the, the traditions of the different Orthodox communities, um, to maybe have them come in once a week for, um, you know, a full hour class to address, you know, the particulars of, of the tradition of that church, something that we still need to work on, but really uh, at its core, the religious instruction, that's just, yeah, I don't think we can separate that as Orthodox. Talking about God, talking about, and you know, again, the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, that is going to be a constant conversation. Uh, thank you, Alice. Uh, we got many questions. <laughs> Great, I love it. <laughs> I, I, we have another question. Are all the teachers Orthodox, and is that a requirement? Yes. For this year, I, and I would say for all of our foundational years, absolutely this team is going to be um, an Orthodox team as we're building, building our core and growing our roots. Um, in the future, I, I can't speak to the future, but for now we have plenty of certified Orthodox teachers available to us and who have applied to the school. We're in the middle of interviewing right now um, that we can operate with an Orthodox team. Uh, for families, we, will, we want to serve our Orthodox families first, but I think that door would be open a lot sooner to non-Orthodox families, I think it would be a lovely way to, uh, to be a mission to our community, to introduce them to Orthodoxy through a school like this. Uh, so I have less hesitation about letting non-Orthodox families in, but for sure we want to serve our Orthodox community first. So that is how we're gonna operate the enrollment anyway. Okay, I have another two questions. I would like to continue right. because, or three questions if you don't mind. Of course. About, uh, yes. Will it be a church there or in the communion and this as a school? Or? So it really depends on the facility where whether there's a chapel there or not. Um, the current facility that we're looking at has a small chapel, but that chapel is um, in their office space. So it wouldn't be accessible to the school anyway. Um, as far as communion, uh, I, at this point, I'm going to say no, unfortunately, because some of our Orthodox communities are not in full communion. That's not something that we can uh, can do as a full school, and therefore, so that we don't create any division, that is not something that we're going to do. Um, I guess we've talked about this a lot. Again, this kind of orthodox nature of our school lends itself to this sort of conversation, but um, we may not be in full communion as orthodox communities, but that doesn't mean that we can't be in community as orthodox people, right? And that's what we're focusing on. And that's what we want our children to focus on and grow up with is that the whether or not, you know, the, the, the politics that happen above us don't have to affect our personal relationships with the, the other Orthodox people in our community. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a question about registration fees. Yes. 
can you clarify uh, more? Uh, yeah. Registration fees more? Because so, maybe many people. Yeah, so this is, uh, I don't know if you can still see the, the slide that I have up here right now, or if it's covered by faces potentially. <laughs> Um, but we do have, so we have our tuition fee, uh, which is an annual fee. It can be split up into monthly payments. We have a one-time registration fee as you apply for the child that is non-refundable, and that's $50 per student. Once they are enrolled in the school, that is not something that you would have to pay every year. Um, that activity fee that you see there for $325, that would be an annual fee as well. That's again, as a startup school, there are so many costs. Um, that activity fee is gonna help us with field trips or with getting equipment uh, for physical education classes, those, those sorts of things. Okay, we have another uh, question. Yes. Um, about um, somebody confused about mixing classes, for example, hmm. uh, great, two curriculum will be difficult for grade one, for example. Right. So, you know, it's, um, in Manitoba, this is something that actually has been a reality for some time, the, the mixed grade classrooms. Uh, and what the teacher will do is they will take a core unit and they will teach it to the, the broad class and then divide the actual work into great appropriate material for each of those different classes. So again, math, for instance, is something that uh, the teacher would have to do individually. So while they would give some form of independent work to let's say the grade fours, and then they would take their grade threes aside and do math appropriate to a grade three level. Although you do find um, at least, this is what I hear from certified teachers. I am not one myself. Uh, if my sister would, was here, I'd, I'd make her chime in and answer this question. Uh, the, you do find that there is an element of, because the older kids get to mentor the younger kids, there's actually a relationship that forms there that helps solidify the learning for the child. Um, I, I think that there are disadvantages to mixed grade classrooms. I think there are advantages too. And as I said, the goal though is as we grow and um, secure a facility that's big enough that we would eventually have single grade classes. Thank you so much. We have another uh, question about the curriculum. Yes. Uh, will it be the same as uh, ones in the public schools or different or? Yeah. For so, all, for subjects, math, science, etc. Yeah. Because we want to apply as a funded school, so um, non-funded schools do not need to teach Manitoba curriculum. So this first year, we have a little bit more flexibility as to what's being taught. However, we have Manitoba certified teachers who are well-versed in, in the Manitoba curriculum um, and are confident in being able to relay those with our orthodox mindset and orthodox perspective. Um, our goal is to already begin with the Manitoba curriculum from the get-go so that as we're applying for funding, that's not a hiccup at all. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, but we will have Manitoba. So it is, yeah, it, it would be the same as what's in the public schools, although I would argue perhaps uh, to a higher standard. <laughs> Was good. We need higher yeah. standards. Yes. Yeah, well, sure. based on what I've seen anyway, yes. Thank you. I think this is what I got so far. Okay, uh, great. But going forward, Alyssa, so this is, uh, this is a great presentation so far, but going forward, who influences what gets taught or how, um, how the curriculum is changed? That's a good question. So, so can you repeat that question again? So how... Who influences how yeah, the so curriculum is taught? Yeah, going forward. So, for example, you said you're going to start with the Manitoba curriculum at this point, yes. but uh, looking to change or, or pivot that to be orthodox kind of right. focused in future. So who, who actually is the committee that looks yeah. or will be looking after or influences the change in curriculum? 
Great. So, yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that it would be a change in curriculum, but maybe perhaps just how you approach it. Uh, but we do have lots of certified teachers on our team, as well as a professor from St. Andrews College at the U of M campus, um, who's uh, whole background is religious education. So I think we'll lean heavily into the resources that we have in the Orthodox community um, and our priests. <laughs> so the priests from all of the, the different Orthodox jurisdictions were going to be asking for their guidance, asking for their feedback in helping us, um, you know, form and inform the choices that we're making. This is um, not something that I would take upon myself. It, it's definitely, as all Orthodox things are, it'll be a, a, a communal a communal effort. I have uh, my personal question about the funding. You yes. mentioned something, but uh, can you clarify more about the funding? Because you sure. said you will depend about uh, funding from the government or... Uh, will depend about donations or uh, what is the plan, general picture about the funding? Yeah. Yeah. So there are two ways to open up uh, an independent school in Manitoba. There are two routes. One is non-funded and the other is funded. So non-funded has um, different requirements. You don't have to have certified teachers, for example. You don't need to teach Manitoba curriculum. Uh, there's some more flexibility as far as the school dates and hours. Um, but there are some disadvantages. One obvious one being you don't get any money from the government to help fund your school. Uh, the other is that in the high school level, you're not allowed to issue uh, high school diplomas. So with that in mind, our, our goal is to go for funding. Um, and we are um, making our decisions with that goal in mind. We were hoping actually to apply this year already, but there are certain things that we fell short with. Um, one being uh, a principal who is a certified teacher and available to you know, give their time within the budget that we have. Uh, the other being uh, having certified teachers also available as substitutes. We don't have a long enough list yet of certified teachers to cover a substitution list. So for this year, again, we're going to be going for non-funding and then get those ducks in a row again, as I said, for the second year of operation. So for year one, two, and three, all of those operating funds need to come from our community. So we are going to be fundraising heavily. You'll hear many opportunities to help us along that track. We are in the middle of applying for our charity status to make that easier for people to, to donate that way. Although you're already able to donate through our website if, uh, if you have the means and, and the willingness to do so. Uh, once we spend two years uh, in that funding application process, then that following year, we will get funding from the government. Right now, that looks like about $6,000 per child. And that's half of what the public schools get for, for each student. So, so as you can imagine, the, the overall operating costs for the school are, are a lot. So we need, we need help from our communities to, to get there, whether that's through fundraising or donations. Um, but the, yeah, it'll be a busy first few years uh, to make that happen. Well, That's one of the reasons why we sent the tuitions at, at the rates that we did. We had been hoping to have lower tuitions so that we could access Let's more try families. Let's try to do one second. Uh, no, that's not that. Uh, we were trying to set a lower tuition for our families, but just given the nature of being a non-funded school, we had to raise the tuitions just slightly so that we could help cover the costs of the teacher salaries because we want to be um, fair to them and give them uh, a wage that not only is reasonable but also worthy of what we're asking them to be for our kids. So, thank you. You're we welcome. have uh, another two uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, will there be before school and after school daycare? 
I, I wish we could offer that. As a non-funded school, we cannot. Um, when we apply for funding next year, that is something that would be an option. Uh, so I will say, if there's anyone in your community who's, who has the desire, a strong desire for this, there is an option to, to create a licensed daycare within the space of the school. Uh, and that way we could have a before and after program. Um, it is a big project. When you look at the handbook for creating a licensed daycare, it's, it's about as big of a project as making this school is. So it's not something we can take on personally, uh, although we see the value in it and, and understand that it's really important for many families. So that is our goal for, you know, something to continue to grow for. I, I'm not sure that's something that will be able to happen for this year. Um, but again, if, if, we're, if we have enough families in those surrounding communities, potentially we could help families work that out so that um, the before and after care is uh, taken care of in other ways. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, we have another comment about uh... Can you call, uh, forward us? Do you have a website on the communication yeah. information? Yeah, yeah. Our so our website or Marianne? Yes. Yeah. So we have our website is www.heavenlykingacademy.ca. We have a Facebook page as well. You can look us up, Heavenly King Orthodox Academy. I believe one of our members also has us up on Instagram by now already. So if you are on Instagram, you can follow us there. I send out a, new, a weekly newsletter with any updates. If you would like to be on that newsletter, uh, if you're comfortable, you can leave your email in the chat and I'll check it before we leave today. Uh, or um, you can email me at admin at heavenlykingacademy.ca and ask to be added to that newsletter. All of the previous newsletters are up on our blog on our website. So you can go back and look through at all the information that we've posted already over the last several months. Um, but if you want to be kept in touch, that's the way to do it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to move through a few more slides because some of these questions will hit as we go here and I'm looking at our time. I'm so grateful for all these questions though. This is, this is really wonderful. Thank you, uh, of course. So this is just a slide showing again, the nuts and bolts for those families who are curious um, about what the actual day-to-day -day school will look like. So be classes beginning at nine, ending at 3.30, course morning, afternoon recess, and that one hour lunch hour. And again, these are things you've ever seen, school bus available. We will do our absolute best trying to connect families who would like to carpool or arrange uh, before and after care outside of the school um, because as a non-funded school we will not be able to uh, offer that. I'm not going to go through the each and, each and every one of these steps right now but we do have a dress code. This is something that's important to us um, as uh, well it's fine. I was going to say as a uniformity, isn't that funny to say, <laughs> given that we're talking about uniforms, just to have unity within the school. I, I grew up in a school that had a dress code and I do think it relieves a lot of pressure on the kids and it builds a sense of strong community uh, within the children. So to, to make it a little easier on our families and not have the large expense of a uniform through one of these uniform providers. Instead, we opted for a dress code for this year. Any of these items, you know, Old Navy, Gap, uh, Children's Place, they all offer these sorts of clothes now specifically for, for schools. So we thought this would be a good option, uh, a lower cost option for many families um, who would like to enroll their kids in the school. Again, so we are going to have Manitoba curriculum taught by Manitoba certified teachers. Each one of our classroom teachers will be certified um, as teachers. Because we don't yet have that subbing list of certified teachers filled up, we may not be able to get a substitute teacher that is certified, but those, uh, how would I call them, uncertified educators uh, will be following the instructions of those certified teachers 
uh, as they go through those, as they go through their days. So it's always going to be um, regulated in that way. So we will, of course, include physical education, arts, a basic French program, and we will have really religious instruction under the guidance of their spiritual leader. So again, leaning on all those Orthodox parishes and leaning on all those parish priests and asking for help in, 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 in guiding our young ones. We talked about this one already as well. So yes, yeah, so we have a space in mind that is looking quite good and we're hoping to secure very soon. Um, but if any of you know of a space, um, we already were in talk with St. Mark about the use of the classrooms. And unfortunately that, that won't be an option for us this year. Um, but if in your, your outside world, if you know of any offices potentially that are empty or other halls or basements or anything that has space for three classrooms and is able to think of us as, as a mission. So we cannot afford commercial market rent. Um, so really we need a tenant that is willing to see us and see the work that we're doing as, as worthy of, um, of a lower rent so that we can work together to educate these children. Again, once we hit our funding, we have more flexibility to offer, offer more along those, those lines. But in the meantime, uh, we are asking for the Holy Spirit to guide us to our home. It's out there. We just need to find it. So some important dates to remember, we'll be starting to accept student applications in February, February 1st. We're going to leave that round of enrollment open until the 28th of February. Again, trying to accommodate as many Orthodox families as we can first before opening that enrollment up to the broader community. Families will receive their notification of acceptance by April 1 and uh, tuition payments will begin July 1st. So there will be the option to either pay in full or to pay monthly uh, beginning in July as well. Here's the page that shows how you can continue to be in contact with us. So we've got our website up there, heavenlykingacademy.ca. We're on Facebook or on Instagram, uh, or you can sign up for that weekly newsletter. Please just let me know if you wanna be a part of that. I send it out once a week. We are already in the midst of fundraising. We just launched this and we would love your participation. So it, it is a wine raffle and a 50-50 draw. We understand that our Coptic Orthodox brothers and sisters don't partake of alcohol. So the 50-50 draw though is, is a way that you can still uh, participate and be a part of this fundraiser. So how a 50-50 draw works is you buy tickets um, and all of the money from the tickets go into a single pot. And then when the draw happens on February 26th, half of that pot size will go to the winner and half goes to Heavenly King Orthodox Academy. So right now I think the pot is just shy of $400. So the winner would get uh, 200, but we've got a long way to go until that draw date. So we're hoping that that pot grows quite large. We also have an evening dinner gallon auction scheduled for the end of April. So you can keep your eyes um, open for that. And there will be many other in between. Again, we've got a big, <laughs> we've got a big stretch goal for fundraising here. So we'll be, uh, we'll be in contact a lot for those. Uh, because yes, there are, you know, substantial needs as a startup school. So we'll be reaching out in a variety of ways, whether it's, you know, fundraising events, honestly, just, your willingness to spread the word about us is a lot. It means a lot to us because so many people don't know about us yet. Uh, and that is our biggest barrier to serving them, serving their families. Um, but also to, you know, when we have these fundraising events, if they don't know about us, they're certainly not going to to know to participate. So spreading the word about us and, and helping us uh, reach as many people as we possibly can. Uh, if you are a certified teacher and would like to be involved in this school, we'd love to hear from you. We are just beginning our interview process right now, so it's not too late to apply. Um, just email me a letter of, in like, not, it's formally called a letter of interest, but just let me know you're interested and then get your resume and references to me as soon as you can and we'll get you slotted into that interview process. Or if you're willing just to be a substitute, either as a certified teacher or um, just a volunteer who is knowledgeable and likes to work with kids. Of course, all of these people, um, if, if families are worried about us just opening the door that way, we're all gonna have the criminal background checks done and all of those proper um, 
things in place to make sure that our kids are safe. But um, I think it's a beautiful thing that we can rely on our community for classroom volunteers in this way and to involve as many people as we can. Because this school, I mean, I haven't said this yet, but we really need all of the Orthodox communities in Winnipeg to feel as if this is their school. So as, as if this was St. Mark's school, or in my case, this was Holy Trinity school. Um, and support us the same way you would your, your very own, because really it is, it is your school and it is my school and it's everyone's school from across the city. Um, we need ownership. We need every one of you to feel ownership over this school and, and to, to want it to succeed. This is, this is how we are going to reach our goals. So there we go. This is my last slide. So please consider us <laughs> and donate. We have a donate button up on our website. If you, again, have the means and are, are able to, we, if you need to wait until we have charity status, that is something that is in the works and we will let you know as soon as that happens. Um, but now if we can open it up, if there's any other questions that landed in that chat, I'm happy to answer. Okay, uh, I have one in the chat uh, sending uh, her email. Great. You would like to take it or Marianne, she can take it or? Sure, Marianne, if you could do that for me, that would be great. That way I won't forget. Yeah, absolutely. I'm writing it down. I'm going to email it to you. Lovely. And I think um, I'm like or I'm 100% sure that there's some people interested also as applying to uh, to be teachers. Wonderful. So do you want to uh, like, yeah, uh, speak to that, Alyssa? Yes. So again, we are, um, we have not solidified our teaching positions yet. We are looking for three classroom teachers full time or potentially we could also entertain the idea of part time positions as well and just have more certified teachers on staff. Uh, if you are interested, please, please reach out. Let me know that you're interested so I can slot you into that interview process. Um, we would need a resume, a pastoral reference. So for St. Mark, you would ask uh, Father Marcos or one of your, your priests to offer a letter of reference as well as a work reference um, for us to look at. But until you can get those letters in place, just, just letting me know that you're interested is enough. And we will, uh, we will, we would love to meet you and hear more about you and see if we can uh, work together on this super important Important work. It means so much to me. And I, I, I hope you guys are as excited about it. This is, I am, I think is we've been praying about this for so long and it's time, it's time to make it happen. Uh, but we need everyone to, to pitch in and, and, and help. I have a question here. So, uh, thanks again, Alyssa, for, um, we can see your, your passion getting a uh, Orthodox ch uh, church, uh, sorry, uh, school there. Um, uh, have you been giving any thoughts about, um, low income families? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be some, uh, new, uh, comers that, uh, would have, uh, some kids that they wanted to, um, put them into, uh, Orthodox schools have been given, have you been given any thoughts about, or a path forward for, uh, people who can uh, apply for subsidy or any 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 thoughts into subsidization of these fees or anything? Absolutely. Yes, that has been on the discussion table for sure. Uh, I would say for this year, just given our own um, funding issues, right, or the constraints on our own budget, I th what we feel is the best option for those families right now is potentially um, reaching out to their own parish communities and asking them to um to raise funds for these children's tuition right um i think that's probably the the easiest way for now How, and and i would say in a quiet way <laughs> if there's a family out there that really desires to be a part of this school and and money is the only issue and we have space available in our classes um we would do everything in our power to accommodate that family, you know, maybe um, allowing that family to offset that money with volunteer hours, or I, I think we can be creative this way, but I would say the first option, yeah, if, if, if we could have people from the community 
And if there's anyone in this community who would like to put money specifically aside as tuition for families that can't afford it, uh, that is a, a fund that we can absolutely start um, because we know that this tuition, uh, we set it at a price that will unfortunately price some of our families out. And that pains me a lot <laughs> more than, you know, um, but there are ways to, to, to help these families. And I, I, and I think we can, uh, we can work wonders if we work together. I think uh, with prayers, definitely things yes. can, wonders will work. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, Alyssa, we have one question now about how long classes will be merged till this uh, merge between one and two, three, four, five, six, for how long? Right. It will, it will largely depend on our student enrollment and our facility. So if we, and our, uh, and our certified teachers, I suppose, there's, there's lots of, lots of things that we would need to juggle. I, I would say as soon as we can move to a single grade, we will. Um, but that will depend on finding a facility that'll accommodate. So right now we only need to find a facility that has space for three classrooms. If you want to split those up into single age groups, now you need a, a facility that has a minimum of six classrooms plus library plus art room plus music room like it's it's not uh, it's not easy to find on our rental budget um but we so i don't have a good answer my my only answer is as soon as we can we will we will move to the other model thank you yeah any more questions for I really appreciate all the questions so far. This is this has been wonderful. Okay, I'll leave uh, Father Marcos to sure. say his words. Thank you so much for your efforts. Uh, God bless you all the time and uh, keep going. We can uh, pray in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thanks so much. Thank you, Luna. Like, yeah, like the uh, presentation was great. And I think, yeah, people have a better idea about, about the project. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, uh, Hanan. Thank you, Buna. Yes, thank you for your welcome today. It was a pleasure. Okay, good luck. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.